Imagine the worst thing that's happened to you, times it by 10, add a bit of public humiliation and a little bit of self-loathing, and I still bet you that being stepped by a prop is 100 times worse. The sidestep is a dangerous weapon in rugby. It can break down defenses, humiliate defenders, and win World Cups. And it also can make someone's highlight reel 7,000 times better. It's like a nutmeg in football or a no-look pass in basketball. It's a way for attackers to outplay their opposition and put themselves in a better position than previous. But not everyone can do it. And if they could, rugby would look like some sort of weird dance of everyone just jigging and jagging around the pitch. So what makes those people that are so good at it so good? Let's have a little talk. What makes stepping in rugby so great is that there's such a wide range of different steps. And just to clarify, these steps are called different names by different people. I'm just going to run through a little whistle-stop tour of some of the steps that you might see on a rugby pitch. The basic step, a single directional change in order to manipulate the position of the defender. The double step, two changes of direction with the goal to move the defender one way and stepping the other. The jump step, taking flight and landing with a powerful directional change, not only confusing the defender, but also confusing yourself. I'm pretty certain most people that use this step don't even know what's going on with their lower body. The goose step, in its basic form, it's manipulating your momentum by slowing down and speeding up, with the aims of slowing down the defender and them not speeding back up. The step back, it's a harsh deceleration, exploding backwards, usually sending the defender into next week. The spin, uh, you just spin. The stutter step, a quick, rapid chopping of the feet with the option to explode in any direction. The I choose death step, running straight forward with no regard for yours or anyone else's safety. So with all those steps, it begs the question, how do I actually make my step effective? Well, it's all down to weight distribution. That's the nuts and bolts of it. Being able to manipulate your body weight in a fast and explosive manner. Your main planting leg is the key here. This is where you're going to produce all of that explosive power. Um, imagine almost being aggressive with the floor and using your foot as a release of all that negative energy and aggression. Look at Newton's third law, for example. It states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. In simple words, the more power you can produce for your leg onto the ground, the faster you're going to be able to manipulate your body weight and move your body. Right, to really emphasize the importance of getting all of that power through that planting foot, let's take a look at this clip here quickly by Cheslin Colby. Look how much power he gets through that right foot. It almost launches him one, one and a half meters in the opposite direction. That's the kind of power you want to strive for in your step because it really gives the defender no chance at all. Keeping yourself low to the ground with a low center of mass will help during your step. It's gonna be so much more effective than keeping upright during your movement. What people tend to overlook and is arguably maybe even more important than the step itself is the acceleration you produce after your step. Look, it's great to be able to wave your hips around like you're in some sort of step up dance battle, but if you're accelerating like you've just come out of the retirement home afterwards, then what's the point? The sidestep and the subsequent acceleration work hand in hand like Batman and Robin, Mario and Luigi, Thunder and Lightning and, you know, Marla and Haskell and maybe, maybe not, maybe not Marla and Haskell actually. What's the point in stepping in the first place if you can't put the nail in the coffin? The best steppers in the world can move the defender's body and then quickly accelerate out of it so they can escape that comfortable tackling zone. Although it would be awesome, you simply can't rely on breaking someone's ankles every time you step because it simply just won't work against higher level defenses. Focus on transferring that energy during that acceleration phase in that first three, four meters post that initial impact because that's what's going to set you apart from an aesthetically pleasing step to an actually effective step. The step is like a beautiful waltz. It doesn't work if there's a piece of the puzzle missing. You need an attacker and you need a defender. But the waltz doesn't always have a happy ending. It needs a winner. Someone is going to step on the other person's toe. Do the wrong move and the dance will end not in your favour. And as the stepper, you want to be the winner of this exchange. And as everyone knows that's been in a healthy relationship, the key to this is manipulation. The attacker wants to be able to manipulate the defender's body position, and there's usually two ways you can spot this. 
a change in the foot position of the defender or a change in the shoulders of the defender. These two factors can almost be used as triggers to help you decide which way you're going to be stepping. The aforementioned double step is a great example of this. The first initial smaller step is used to expose the weakness. This could be the planted feet or the exposed weak shoulder. And then the second step is used to exploit this weakness that they've left so kindly open for you. Right, so to demonstrate manipulation in action within a step, let's take a look at this Simeon Latu step that you may have seen before. Arguably the best step of all time, definitely the best schoolboy step of all time. Stop it! You can't do that! Just watch how that first initial smaller step completely sends the defender the wrong way. And then he acts and strikes with that secondary step, powering through to completely humiliate the defender. Honestly, I have never seen a defender look so vulnerable in my life. I think if that was me defending in that situation, I would just lie on the floor and potentially never get up. I, 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 you've got to fake an injury at that point. You've got, to, you've got to ask for a sub because there's no way you're coming back from that. What a step that is. We all have that teammate that, to be fair to them, can step really well, but only can step off of one foot. If we gave them the ball too much, they would literally be stepping in circles or they go from one touch line to the other. God forbid you ask them to step off the other foot because I think it would rupture time and space itself. It would create some sort of black hole that would swallow the world up whole. You don't want to be that person. Having the ability to step equally as effectively off both feet is extremely beneficial because not only do you keep defenders on their toes, you can also be more effective in a variety of game-based scenarios. Just being able to step off of both touch lines as a winger is extremely important because it means you can go hunting for the ball more and be more of a threat all around the pitch. And also you big boys in the middle, you should be using footwork as well. It's not exclusive to backline players. You should be using it pre-contact in order to give yourself the best opportunity to make game line. It also helps you get smashed slightly less often. And it doesn't have to be a massive left foot step. It can be something subtle, a little change of direction, or even a something as simple as a change in your running line. This will help you to gain an edge over that defender and help you produce better game line attack for your back line. Well, there you go. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've maybe even learned something about stepping. Um, once again, thank you for the ongoing support with the channel. I really appreciate it. All the likes and the subscriptions and the love you guys are showing. So um, hopefully I'll see you again in my next video. So goodbye. Thank you.